Cool, Liam. Thanks for, for, for catching up, mate. I appreciate you taking the time to have a chat to, to some of the, the younger kids who will be watching this up at the, up at the club. Um, how are you handling the lockdown? What have you been up to? What's a professional cricketer that's itching to play cricket do when uh, there's nothing allowed to be done? Well, golf just reopened. So I've, I had a round yesterday. I'm going for a round later this evening. Uh, so that's uh, the something that's going to keep me busy for the next next couple of couple of weeks, more than likely. And we were lucky enough before the ground closed down. Me and Gareth. So I'm living with um, with Gareth Hart, one of the other other lads. Is, that who, we, is, is he now number one golf buddy as well? No, not currently. The club I play at aren't allowing guests yet. So hopefully that's that'll happen in a week or so. Right. So he can come come and have a hit with me. So we went and got a load of the gym stuff from the ground, got a squat rack and a bench and a bar and a load of decent amount of weight. And we've been been really good to, that's all in the garage. So it's been good to actually get some proper proper work done rather than trying to fashion things together and not really have enough enough weight to get anything anything yeah. done. And a bit of running. I've started my own blog. So I've done that. Okay. I've done a few online courses. So I've never... Like, once I finished school, I sort of went straight into cricket. That's what I wanted to do. I didn't. There was no pull from from uni or further education or anything like that. So done yeah. a few little online courses to see what what a fancy really. Just put myself yeah, it's, out there. It's important. It is important yeah. to have something else. Kind of learn outside the game, because to be honest, when this is all, I'm not sure uni would be for me. It'd be more. What what, what have you been doing? What courses have you done? I've done a. I did a personal branding one, so seeing how I portray myself across certain platforms as well as it helped if I ever needed to do a job interview. That was something yep. that, that was actually quite interesting of, yep. of what I might want to actually say. And then I'm currently about halfway through a diploma in media studies. So sort of like, a not journalism, but sort of how the, the evolution really, it's an American-based company that offer it. So it's a yeah. lot of talking about New York Times, the typewriter, mass printing, things along those lines. So about halfway through that at the moment, and that's I've done that for about the last two weeks, I reckon. So that's just do it at my own pace, bit of a read. Halfway through is a bit of a test. Do a bit more, another bit of a test, and then hopefully I pass it, and then I can I can have that to uh, to put on a CV, really. Yeah. A decent year last year it was a breakout year for you. I mean, it, you know, you're a young pro. What are you now? 20, 21 years old. Decent year last year. I can imagine it's driving you crazy, missing the start of the season, having having done all of. Well, I know you're away in the winter. We'll come to that. But you know, just to just to try and keep progressing on what you did last year. How frustrating have you been, or have you found it? What's what's currently yeah, happening? Just, just turned 21 in uh, during this lockdown, so that was nice to to celebrate a birthday. Locked in with without my mates, but we got on a, a bit of a video chat and a little bit yeah. like we are now and had a bit of crack for the evening. But it, I thought this year was going to be a really, really good year of learning for me. So yeah. having signed a, a multiple year contract, I thought this year would be, the pressure would have been off a little bit in yeah. terms of, okay, I think I'm good enough to, to pen a deal that's more than a year for the, yeah. for the first time. And, is this, your first, is this your first full-time pro or were you full-time pro last year in that you weren't sort of it was a, senior yeah, it was academy? Full, yeah, it was a full-time full -time pro last year. But this at the end of that year, I signed, that two -year, signed a two-year deal. So I thought yep. this year could be a real exploration of just being able to express myself and not having too many doubts of if it doesn't quite go to plan, then yeah. I'm out of a job at the end of the Every year. Every time you play the game, if you do well, you might get taken on. If you do crap, it might bin you. Yeah, yeah. That, that was something that I thought might really help with my mental approach to the game and how I'm, yep. how I'm acting, sort of a security, even either sort of within a role of last year, a lot of the white ball was, I knew what I was doing and at the start yep. of it, so we had bangers as captain, Cameron Bancroft for the one day stuff, I sort of had a decent idea of what I'd be, what I'd be doing and then come the T20, started with Stewie and then it, it moved to Pete just yep. after sort of a halfway halfway stage and I knew what I was doing it's nice to have that clear role and I think that really helped me yeah so I felt going into this year I was, I was confident and 
did a little bit of work during during the winter trying to work on a few lineup issues with with my feet with bowling and sort of ex- exploring different different avenues as well as as well as keeping my batting going trying to fit in that sort of five six spot and provide a, a different option with the ball so I was very excited for the year but hopefully we'll get a little bit of cricket still plenty of time there's sort of the looking start of July so that'd give us three months if it was start of July but yeah we'll see we'll see when we get there it's amazing at the age you are and, the, and where you are in your pathway, just how many things are out there exploring to find out. And it's not all just about playing the game, it's understanding what's going on. And obviously the professional things around about that, just tempering or tailoring your attitude just a little bit, just to let go of that wonder of, is the next game going to be the game where I'm going to impress them or am I going to fall on my face? It's nice that you get that security of a couple of years. Um, being a young bloke from, you're, you're a, you're a, you're a Cumbria lad. You're a West Coast lad. Penrith was your was your club, wasn't it? You, good. You were a good, solid junior cricketer. Obviously, tell us a little bit about the pathway getting into Durham. Obviously, Cumbria is a minor county. We've got a lot of kids in Northumberland, the South North, that are also in the same thing, um, in the same boat, trying to attract, you know, the first class counties. How easy or how difficult was it for you to transition from being, you know, a, a premier sort of junior cricketer in 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 the West to come across to Durham and, and sort of carve a niche for yourself, you know, in, in, in Durham? I wouldn't say it was for, for every, you've got, you've got to want it. So a lot of the lads in, in Durham and Lancashire, so Lancashire was my other, other option really of trying to play. Yeah. Any Were you involved degree. in their pathway as well? I went to one training session and I didn't really enjoy the, the atmosphere and how I, how I was welcomed at, at the time. So yeah. that's why. That was one of the reasons of, of choosing Durham to try and pursue. But I think that having had a few players come before me, so Asher Hart, who moved on from Durham, he'd already sort of been in the academy and got involved. He was at Penrith as well. Before that would have been Clarkey, who's still on the staff. And then obviously the major one would be, would be Stokesy. And then for, for any Northumberland, Northumberland lad, you've got Mark Wood, still bursting in, balling fast and sort of obviously broke his way into Durham and then made it to the highest level in, in Test Match cricket. So how I got there was a lot of sort of grafting, grafting really to begin with. And then I got a chance, played against Durham in an under-15 game. So I was 14 at the time, I was playing a year up because yeah. of sort of the lack of people in Cumbria and the lack of cricketers. You got opportunities like that. So yep. even at even at club level when I was thirteen, I would be playing under fifteens or yep. when I was fifteen I'd be playing the under seventeen stuff. So it was just the last always of... ball spin, right? No, definitely not. I wanted to be fast when I was younger until You until realized I, you were only gonna be four foot. I realized three. I really wasn't and I was gonna well looking back on it, I was never gonna be tall enough from five ten. Yep. It's not it's not tall enough to be a seam when I I don't think I, I reckon I might touch 70 mile an hour if I let one go. So that's not really. It's not going to scare too many people, is it? No, definitely not. It's, I could probably catch up with it on the, uh, on the way down. So doing, well, game, but... doing well in them Cumbria Durham games. Is that how you sort of progressed to the academy at Durham? Is that yeah. how basically that was, unraveled? I played at Bishop Auckland against. Oh, my old Durham. club. Durham, yeah. Durham's under 15 team. And. Ball to right, I think three for. Yep. I got, uh, who did I get out? I think we got Coggers out, Josh Coglin, who was like, before he was a bowler that everyone knows now, he was like just churned out runs. Yep. For fun, like 100 after 100. And then I think the other one would have been, I think it was Luke Henderson, who was steady cricketer, plays for players in the leagues now, does all right. And then there would have been someone else. So I got a few of their bigger players out. And then it rained a bit. And so we got left, I think it was like 2.30 odd or something, and I was batting at five. So we had a decent decent team, to be fair. We had a few, a few good players. And batting at five came in, what would it have been? 50 odd for three. I had a little look back because I'd been writing a little for my, uh, for my website blog that I've been doing just to work yeah. out a bit of a story behind it. And did the right thing. I finished 70 odd and out and... Obviously, the Durham coach was there, but Jeff Cook, like Durham legend, everyone knows Jeff from Durham. Yeah. 
Not like Jeff to be watching junior cricket. Yeah, before my before the rain, my granddad walked around the boundary with him all day. Yeah. I didn't have a clue, didn't have a clue who it was. So that was sort of the initial initial thing. And he rang obviously rang John Windows, Academy Manager, and got a got a hold of my mum and asked me to go for a go for a training session. And that's where sort of my first experience of the Riverside and, and Durham started really. And then Endless Hours in the car up and down the year 66, uh, or the year 69 rather. No, 66. 66. Oh, okay. Yeah. Over the yeah. Pennines. Long, long way, long way after school, uh, a, late, a late ride home in the dark during the winter. A lot of kids will know about them, them long trips. You went to the academy, um, you went to Dubai with the academy as well. Can you remember a little bit about that? What year was that? Yeah. You went with? That was that would have been that year, so I would have been fourteen. How long that been? Seven, two thousand and thirteen, I think. Stay, you, did you stay in the Black Hotel in in? Um, yeah, the Ramada. We stayed in the Ramada. In the Ramada, okay. Yeah. yeah. So we had we had a group from the club across there, obviously in February, and you know went past that with Shazad and fantastic place. I mean, amazing. We we uh, you know found it incredible. It, yeah, um, so we, we were did that there. really wet your whistle for that sort of level of cricket once you'd, once you'd been part of that set up and you know I can imagine by then you'd have won oh, the yeah. badge and it would have been what this is it yeah that was sort of the first step on a ladder really of yeah. making it a little bit making it to where I am now and hopefully beyond that was the first the first step definitely it was really really eye opening remember realised I was in no shape to play cricket and just needed to lose some weight which took a few years to to work out how to how to do that and getting somewhere near fighting shit but yeah definitely wet like you said wet, wet the whistle and give me a so when, when did a you full, come to Durham full time full time first like development contract would have been how long ago was that last year before 2017 Turned out to be a good year for you. 2017, somewhere so around there. We got. Um, I know you you made a debut that year, and um, was not actually made your debut T20, wasn't it? You got Hills yeah. out on that game, Alex Hills. I did. We got one wicket, and I was lucky enough to get it. And I think we lost in 15 overs in that game. We scored yeah. about 100, 130, and they knocked it off one down. It wasn't very fun bowling at Hales, Vessels and Brendan Taylor, who played for them at that point. They were very, very good. Good wickets. Been a bit of an eye-opener for you. And then later in the year, I've got the probably your, your best moment so far here. Let me, let's me let just have a look at this. I've got for you the scorecard of the 2020 game. So give us a little bit, a bit, a bit of background. Absolutely. Just have a, have a look. So Durham-Lancashire T20 game. Yeah, that was it. That was the year after that one. At Old Trafford. Yeah. Um, and just having a look at the scorecard now. So Durham about the mid-154, which was decent. But I had a in that game. You know, we talked a lot about your left arm spin at the minute. But, you know, I can tell the listeners your batting's excellent. They've obviously played you at four. What was it like batting with, in, or playing in the team there with Latham and Collingwood, by the way? What were those guys Latham, like to play with? Latham's just a true, true professional. Doesn't miss, doesn't miss a session really, and make sure he gets what he he needs out of out of his training. Collie, yeah. I would have liked to have played a little bit longer and got closer to in terms of his his knowledge around the game, and having played with a few, obviously having played with Swan and a few, been around the world coaching as well as playing. It would have been good to to involve myself a little bit more with him. It was. He did enjoy, so I played, my Champo debut was a year before that, so that was the 2017. 2017. Yeah, so sort of playing, playing under him, he sort of set the bar really high, which, was, which is a good thing, mm -hmm. 100% a good thing, and just tried to, just trying to meet that really, set the high standards and expected it of, of everyone else. Yeah, um, what was uh, Zahir Khan like to face in that game, by the way? Not Zahir, so, Khan, not, not the left yeah. arm over Zahir Khan. Yeah. He's a yeah. leg spinner, isn't he? Left he arm is. wristy. 
Yeah, he, we'd never seen him apart from, I think we had about three minutes of clips from the Afghan Premier League or I think yeah. it was, I don't really think it was T20. I think we were watching him bowling red ball cricket because we had no footage of him. So that was, that was interesting trying to, trying to pick him, to be honest. I wasn't, obviously by me getting four or seven balls, it sort of proves that I didn't pick him. Yeah. But yeah, very. You would have been quick. on your own in that, though, mate. To be fair, yeah, very, very quick through through the crease. Yeah, the pitch was quite conducive, and sort of trying to watch, get as many clues as you could. Yeah. But he was very quick, a little bit like Rashid Khan, which probably the listener knows a little bit more aware of the, to him as as the listener. But he's sort yeah. of like a left arm version, probably not not as good and not quite as fast through the air, but very similar in terms of approach, aggressive approach to the crease and how fast his arm comes over. Yeah. So he was, yeah, we had about three minutes a clip of him bowling red ball cricket in like a fuzzy, you know, when you get like a pitch vision camera, like a fuzzy, yeah. you, like, you can't see anything. You can't yeah. tell where but his look, boys, are. Go and do it. Anything. They had, um, obviously, obviously in that button as, as well, they had Matt Parkinson, who's, well, he played, he toured with England, didn't he, over the winter, who's excellent. James Faulkner, the uh, the the, uh, the Australian who's uh, from from Tasmania. I mean, he's he's a, he was there he was there high at hand, wasn't he? Um, for the for the T Twenty stuff. And then just tell us a little bit about going into the innings because obviously you bowled your, your four overs through what you said in the last over, but didn't from memory I watched the game. It was televised, wasn't it? Remington, I think, bowled a nineteenth over. So how many wickets? How many runs did you have to play with going into that last over? Can you remember? Mm-hmm. I think I had five. Rimo got, I remember, because he got slapped. It was a ridiculous shot. Uh, Jordan Clark was on strike, Graham's yep. brother. And he like slapped him over. I was at long off. And he slapped him over cover for six, like 20 oh. yards. Like, yeah. Old Trafford's massive. If no one's been, Old Trafford is a big ground. Yeah. And he slapped him like 20 yards over deep extra cover off the back foot. I was like, this is what has just gone on. This yeah. is ridiculous. I just watched it. And I was like, so, oh my God. And then I ran in from long off. I didn't think I was going to ball because Wheelie there had a few, like had two overs left, and he was yeah. he'd done the job that year of bowling the death overs really, and sort of bowling a power play ball at the end. Sort of suited his his skills and running in from long off. I didn't know if I was going to ball, and Latham had the ball in his hand, and I sort of ran past, and he just sort of went, "There you go, you're bowling." Pull your length back a bit and keep spinning it hard. How many how many runs did you have? I've got I've got video of, of so many deliveries. I'll show you in a second. How many runs did you have to play with? Well, I, think it, over. I think it was five. I think it was five. It might have been six. Yeah. Okay. Not hundred percent. And you've got James Faulkner on strike, who is, I mean, that was that's his forty. I mean, he was known as the finisher, wasn't he? I mean, that really was, that really was him. Let me just see if I can find this, and we'll we'll, uh, we'll have a bit of a look. Before I hit the play here, I'll make the screen a, a bit bigger. Let's just have a look. How about <laughs> Good catch. Straight up to near again, not out the middle of the bat. Long arm takes the catch. At what point here, Trevor, are you backing yourself? I mean, you know, you've got Faulkner out. Um, you've just lost. Dot- yeah, so after. So the dot ball first ball. So we had a mid wicket and he like hit it back. Yeah. And I've like rolled across in front of the non striker and like got a fingertip on it. And luckily we had a mid wicket in instead of a third man. And Latham ended up like scrambling after it and got it. And it was a dot ball. And then sort of he obviously put it down long on his throat, which was which was nice of him because I thought it was going for six. Yeah. And there was another dot ball. Lamb tried to like scoop me. Hold on, we'll come. We'll come to it. I just wanted to make. I just wanted to check actually that you're getting the sound. Let's go yeah. back to it. So you, you've got him out. You've got Lamb on strike here. Yeah. yeah. Massive shot. Yeah. the big shot. There's a bit going on with Lamb. Was there? Was it Lamb that was having a bit to say to you? No, it wasn't. Well, not in that game. He had a little bit to say in the second team uh, Red Bull game, but it helped when we played on Riverside, and it was the greenest thing I've ever seen. Yep. Until it went flat as a pancake, and then and then it went uh, 
underground. So he had a bit to say when he was bowling a few a bit ago. But I did get a lot of sk- stick from the crowd that day, saying literally chanting Emma Lamb is better than you, which is Danny Lamb's sister. Yeah, good. But How are you before, feeling by now? I mean, you've you've he's just run past it. Are you? You know, you're still only, you've got half a dozen or four or five runs to play with. Are you, are you confident yet? I was confident. So, before that ball, I felt like I was really in the game. So, you yeah. tried like a little, like a scoop. Yeah. It was it was ludicrous. Because the pitch was slow and it was spinning. It would be much better waiting on the back foot for it. But he like tried a little scoop. I think it hit him in the head or something. And Stewie ran around and, and got it. And I thought, well, he's going yeah. to risk one here. Because yeah. the left side was massive that day. Yeah, and I didn't think he backed himself over the offside. I thought he's probably going to go for one, so I pulled it. So I'm coming and pulled it back a touch. But it was before this ball. I thought I've got half a chance here, and then after this happened, I thought, well, surely, surely I can, I can do this now. I think they were eight down or something, seven down. Well, it's massive, isn't it? I mean, let's be honest. You know, not many teams go at Lancashire and, and come away with the result. They were they were stacked. They were they were a good sideline. I mean, especially with respect to Durham. You know, Durham had a good year, a good team that year, especially in the white ball. You know, Will Smith batting at six, Collie, um, you know, Tom Latham at the top. They were a decent batting team. Let's just have a look at uh, the rest of this footage, Jake. Eh? They are making such a hash of this at the moment. Think that was six when you hit it? No, definitely not. So, like people were, like on the commentary there, especially who said, "Oh, he sounds like he's got a good piece of it." But I knew that, that boundary. If you play it on, hopefully it shows the distance between the boundary and the thirty-yard circle is massive. Let's have a look. Yes. Last ball. Not going to be. He plays it along the ground. It's good work, mate. Did you? I mean, that last ball there. I don't know whether people realise it was a hat trick ball. We we attempted. We 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 like. Let me just <laughs> let me just throw it out there. I'll hang it out there wide. See if I can get the slot it up in the air. No, definitely not. So we changed the field, and Latham asked me what I wanted to ball, and I was like, well, I'm going to try and. I'm trying to try and York him, which ended up me yep. rolling half, halfway down into his hip. So we changed the field there. We just got rid of Latham. Latham went and stood behind, basically behind me. Yep. So as the ball, like, so we had long off, Latham behind me, and then like long on. We had no deep extra cover. So I'm not going to hit for six over there. Might need someone, someone behind me, which is a good shout. Um, Rimo was like, well, you're not going to hit for six over extra cover or like over cover. You need to have someone yep. behind you. Like, yeah. Counting it from third man or someone. Like, and what were you feeling like? I mean, what, what were, I mean, it's a televised game. And to be fair, like, we, I spoke to Clyde Rose last week and we had a chat about playing cricket on TV. Like, a lot of the games, all, all the games in the BBL, the Australian Big Bash, are televised. So it's just a given. But this was one of two games that year, I think, Durham had televised. And of course, when it's televised, everybody wants to play in the televised games, right? Last ball, couldn't win. You're a young fella, playing Lanks at Old Trafford. Were you bricking it? Uh, I wouldn't think so. If I went into like a zone, it feels, it's somewhat hard to explain unless you've been there. Not really aware of the crowd, not listening. Not really aware, couldn't really hear anything. Had a sort of a backing of, of the real sort of deep feeling of, well, I've got a chance here, I can, if I back myself, I'll, yeah. I'll do half decent. But I definitely could hear them. When I was fielding, it was more, more nervous than, than balling, 100%. Yeah. Because you can hear everything there. Because it's so hard to focus in, in terms of you're not starting anything. You're just reacting to something happening. Yeah. Okay. Like as a bowler, you can stand there and your mark for an extra 10, 20 seconds. Because for it to begin, you have to start. Yeah. So when McGraw, remember listening to him, he said, at the start of a test match, I'll just wait a little bit longer at the start. Because I think it's all about the batsman, but... Just gonna let the pressure build on him. Let it happen. Yeah. That's what you can do as a bowler. You don't have to begin. I don't have to come to start to run in. I All the stuff that you learn. It's nothing about technique, technique, technique. You won the you won the man of the match. I remember in that game. Yes, the magnum yeah. above click it. Did you give an interview on Sky at the end? 
I think I did, yeah. Was with Dominic mumble your way through something or what? Sorry? Say, did you mumble your way through a, 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 a thank you or? Probably, yeah. I, I'm not, I've never watched it back. Never watched it back. I don't like watching myself talk too much. I find it very weird. What a moment, there, Watch yourself talk is, uh, yeah, I just, I just, just find it really weird to do. Spoken at the start about last year being a, a bit of a breakout year for you. I mean, you played, did you play all the Chamber games last year? You played the majority, didn't you? I played. You got injured 10, towards the end. 10. Yep. So I got injured you, for a Woodson game. Yeah. I had like a, a really, like a tight sort of bundle of muscle. So I couldn't, like trying to bore was very painful. Yeah. So I didn't, didn't play that game. And then got dropped at Lords and went and played a second team game and got a grade two hamstring tear. Yeah. So that was, that was the end of my season. But yeah, 10, 10 games, I think, all the and all, all the white ball stuff. So Yeah, it was debut, debut time for you, that wasn't it? For all you played T20 and you were, I mean, by now your T20 stuff's going great guns. You've played 20, 25 games. You've got neck end of 20 wickets. Your average is fantastic. You, you, you concede less than seven runs and over. I mean, that's, that's, that's spot on, you know. You, top fielder, you're batting nicely when given the opportunity. So, you know, that's... Everything's building on top of that, and then your white ball stuff at the start of the year, the, the one day stuff. What was what was it like transitioning from? Was there any mindset difference from one day cricket to twenty twenty cricket? Maybe maybe a little bit. Like you said, that was a touch weird having not played one day cricket, having debuted both two years prior. But yep. it was it was the same. So it was mine and and Potsy's debut and Scott's debut on the yep. same day. So it was like. Well, congratulations, you're playing, you're playing, you're playing. Yeah. And it's a little bit different. You've got a touch more a touch more time to Cameron Bancroft's one day debut as well in that game, I think. It was well, yeah. North was, North Hans, was wasn't it? First game. Yeah, loads there was loads of debuts on uh, on that first day. First game of the Sorry, my phone's going. Girlfriend. Um so it was going yeah, so it's a little bit different. Not quite as Sort of frantic in terms of getting get out, try and do your job, take a few wickets, and yeah, happy days. Um, in terms of my role there, because we've played a lot of us, a lot of what we bought this team, just because Riverside's usually quite seamer friendly. Yeah. So being the main spinner in that team was more of a cont- containing sort of role. If I can take a few wickets, then good. And we'll take that, but it was more a contain, try go under five and over, that sort of yeah. that gives us half a chance. If we're chasing two fifty, yeah. We'd be quite we'd be quite happy with chasing two fifty. In the short time now that you've had a, a professional career, a first class career, rather than, you know, a young bloke trying to get in that, who are some of the who are some of the difficult I mean that game we're talking about, North Answer, remember you bowled at Jason Holder for a while. And he hit it miles. He was number one all rounder in the world. Is he? Is he somebody that's sort of produced or that's presented rather than produced a, 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 a tougher challenge? Who's been your hardest people to to, to bat against or to face or to bowl at? Bowl at? I think Who you found tough. We did with Hall there because he's so tall. Your length has to be totally different. So his ability to reach balls and manoeuvre the ball was different to other players. So yeah. he's look, he was looking a lot more front foot, get out, get your hands out and like hit me straight off like into extra cover. Yeah. And also had a real ability because of the size of him and he's good, obviously mint. He can just sort of manoeuvre where he wants. He hit me over extra cover a few times, which was quite yeah. impressive. I thought, oh, I've got my length right. And then he sort of just like flicks over. Like a one, one or two bounce four. He was interesting in terms of his height. People such as, let me have a think, Ackerman from Leicester. Yeah. I was really, last year I got him out in a red ball game and that was one of my prouder wickets of the year because in the white ball cricket and even in the red ball, his ability to sweep is very impressive. So someone that can sweep really well. Yeah, like Ackerman, nightmare for spinners. Hard, yeah. But then also... In obviously, hold this. I don't know what he is, six foot seven. 
something like that. And then you go back down to someone a little bit sort of smaller. That's also can be quite difficult because they're more looking, I'm going to sit back. And then as soon as you go up a touch, then they're out the crease. Yeah. But having to think, Guptill and Vessels, when we played at Worcester, they yeah. got hold of me. Obviously, with the They get hold of everybody. They smashed yeah. everything. Did they play? They beat Durham in about 10 overs down there. Didn't they chase yeah. 180 or something in 10 overs? Or yeah, 165-ish, 170. And they got it in like 11, 12 overs. I think it's frightening, I bought, isn't it? I bought really one, is. one over for five, and then I bowled three point four overs, I think, for about thirty-eight. Yeah. So yeah. they got them to obviously hit it a long way, and Bessel's like very good with like a step and hit ball. Yeah. So he, the length to him has to be has to be perfect, but he also plays sort of the sweeps and and the reverses, so quite difficult to bowl at. Dynamic one day player. I mean, New South Wales, the, the Thunder, I think, used him as their overseas. The, the Sydney Thunder or the, the Sixers, I know, a couple of years ago, used him. He was he was excellent. He really was. How was the winter? You went away, didn't you? Where did you? Tell us a little bit about that. I did. I got put on a ECB spin camp. So I went to Wellington to work with Jeet and Patel. Yep. So he's, uh, obviously, people will know him as Birmingham, uh, Warwickshire's and Birmingham's overseas overseas spinner and he's torn up in the county championship and he's highly like, regarded isn't he yeah very highly regarded so i went and worked with him because he was still contracted with with the wellington firebirds so i went and worked with him bowled at their first class team bit of work work out there and then played for upper hut cricket club as well when i was out there which was which was good fun brilliant i mean that, that those I know by now you've played professional cricket, but as a, as a, as a boy growing up, aspiring to go and play, because you've been to Australia as well, haven't you? You were in Canberra, was it last year, the year before? Uh, year before, so so this winter I was New Zealand, and then the winter before I stayed in the North East, yeah. and then the winter before that was my first time away so by now, myself in, in Canberra. As a young bloke, 21 years old now, you've been to Australia, New Zealand, Help me out. You've been to South Africa. We toured South Africa at the start of the year. Zimbabwe, obviously, with Durham pre-season this year. Dubai is a 14-year-old. India. Bit, right. Was that, that was last year with the spin bowling? With, with yeah, that was my Canada. third time. That was my third time in India. Lovely place. How bad is it for 21 years old? You know, when you look at kids aspiring to be professional cricketers, there's, there's lots of things, um, you know, to look forward to and, 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 and really think about and enjoy. And what was... What was New Zealand, like for you overall, was it was it beneficial? I mean, I've never been to the, never been to the country. I've never been to. Did you did you feel that it was what you wanted it to be? No, reasons reasons for that was I got a decent amount out of out of when I worked with G. And but unfortunately for me, and fortunately for him, he got brought onto that to work with the ECB. Yep. So that so was the a little bit. bit. A little bit of a letdown in terms of the amount of contact time I got with him. Yeah. But the positives from that is he's on the end of the phone if I want him. I had a bit of a yeah. chat with him the, the other day, wished him wished him happy birthday and just had a bit of crack around that. So it's nice to have him on, on the end of the phone now. In terms of growing as a person and finding what I like to do, that was a real, really beneficial thing. And anyone thinking about going to New Zealand, definitely, definitely get on a plane and go. Yeah. So that was growing up as, as a person and sort of being being happy with, with who I am and just learning about yourself really was, was something that I found really beneficial from the country. But if anyone's even obviously saying about professional cricketers and 21, I've been able to go to so many places, even even if you're sort of coming into that age age bracket of, of being an adult, 18, 19, even if if you're a, like a steady club cricketer, if you can get away, try and get away. It's it's something that I wish, well, I'm hoping to do a little bit more. And I wished when I was a little bit younger that that's, that's what I'd be able to do. And you can go and play, use cricket as a, as a tool to, to see the world, really. See the world on somebody else's money, absolutely. Trev, you and I will talk cricket until the cows come home, mate. Um, thank you for taking the time for some conversation. I've enjoyed talking to you. We'll... Um, I think 
you know, on behalf of the lads at the club that are going to listen, thanks for, 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 for coming and giving your time up, mate. Good luck for the season when it starts. I'm, I'm sure there's an ECB announcement due today, actually. I don't know if it's more recreational cricket than professional cricket. But um, best of luck, mate. And uh, I know you, you've got big aspirations and you, you've got big things planned for your future and there's no reason why you, why you can't achieve them. Um, but we look forward to seeing a bit more of you on the telly and picking up more bottles of those... Uh, Verve Clegg champagne. Cheers, awesome. Paul. Thank you. Thanks. Cheers.